Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I've got two of ASUS's latest ultra thin and light laptops. We've got the new ZenBook 14 and the ZenBook 15. There is also a ZenBook 13 to complete the trio, but ASUS didn't send that one over. ASUS claimed these are the world's most compact laptops, meaning you get the biggest screen in the smallest body possible. And with a screen to body ratio of 92%, thanks to what ASUS are calling their new four-sided nano edge display, I think they might be right. I have to say these are two of the best looking laptops I've ever used. I really like this royal blue color on the metallic chassis and you get this sort of rose gold color on the speaker bar at the top here. Speaking of which, the Harman Kardon speakers are actually surprisingly good. The ZenBooks have always had a classy and elegant aesthetic to them, but I think these new ones take it to the next level. And that's thanks in part to the ridiculously thin bezels around the screen. ASUS have been clever though, or maybe sneaky. No, I think clever, I think clever because you can see the base lifts up a little bit. So what that does is not only give you a better typing position and also improve the airflow for cooling, but it actually means we're hiding that bottom bezel where they can put all the electronics and all the other gubbins they need to put in there. So actually what you see is a very, very small 92% screen to body ratio screen. And not only that, somehow, somehow when companies like Huawei and Dell have failed to do this, ASUS have managed to put a webcam in a good position, in the normal position on the top bezel, which means it's not looking up your nose, as I say, like on a Dell or Huawei. They've also found room on the top bezel for a 3D IR camera, which means you can unlock the laptop with your face in any lighting conditions, even in the dark, something that a lot of other laptops struggle with. Another nifty new feature is with the ZenBook 14's touchpad, which looks like any other normal touchpad until you click at the top right which brings up this futuristic looking blue virtual numpad. Now, if I'm honest, I don't actually use a numpad that much, but it's a pretty cool feature and quite a smart space saving solution. Smart space saving solution. Try saying that when you're drunk. <laughs> but it's pretty cool and you can just turn it off and on whenever you like. Now, of course, on the bigger ZenBook 15, because there's more space, there's room for a traditional physical key numpad beside the keyboard. These new ZenBooks also feel much more solid and durable than earlier models, particularly the screen. And compared to say the LG Gram, they feel a lot more substantial and there's almost no screen wobble, although there's still a little bit of flex under the keyboard and touchpad if you press firmly. Both laptops are impressively thin and light as well. In fact, the ZenBook 14 weighs just 1.2 kilograms, which is about 2.6 pounds. And that's actually over 100 grams less than the Huawei MateBook X Pro. There's a decent range of ports on both with USB 3, 3.1 Type-C, HDMI and card readers. Although only the ZenBook 15 has a full-size SD card reader, the 14 makes do with micro SD. Unfortunately, the USB-C port does not support Thunderbolt 3, which is a bit of a shame and it means you can't output to multiple high-res displays or even plug in an external graphics card. It's not the end of the world, but it would have been nice to see. As for the screens, obviously we have a 14 inch on the ZenBook 14 and a 15.6 inch on the ZenBook 15. Both of these are Full HD 1080p displays, but you can get the ZenBook 15 with a 4K display if you want 4K. Neither of these are touchscreen panels, but I don't think that's really a big deal, but you can see the difference between the matte panel that we have on the ZenBook 15 and the glossy one we have here on the ZenBook 14. Now there's pros and cons for matte versus glossy, but the good news is that you actually get the option to choose matte versus glossy on all the ZenBooks, which I really like. Color accuracy is pretty good as well. Both cover 97% of the sRGB color gamut. We've also got some solid specs, including the latest quad-core i5 or i7 Whiskey Lake U series of processors. As well as that, you can spec it up to 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte PCIe SSD. The ZenBook 14 I have here uses Intel's integrated graphics, but you can pay more and get it with an NVIDIA GeForce MX150. Whereas all models of the ZenBook 15 come with a GTX 1050 Max-Q graphics card, which gives it the horsepower for some light gaming. Fortnite on the ZenBook 15 averaged a very playable 57 FPS with high settings at Full HD. As for battery life, ASUS claim we'll get 14 hours from the ZenBook 14 and 16 hours from the ZenBook 15, which is um, possible maybe in lab conditions, but in real life, I'm looking at about nine hours from the 14 and 10 hours from the 15, which is actually still very, very good and above average for Ultrabooks. And they'll both easily get you through a full day of work. 
Moving on, and the backlit chiclet style keyboard and the precision touchpad are lovely to use. The touchpad, which as I say doubles as a touch sensitive numpad on the ZenBook 14, is smooth and responsive and it supports all of Windows 10's gestures. The keyboard's also really comfortable to type on, although the keys are slightly on the spongier side. So there's a lot to like here, but no laptop is perfect and there are one or two things that I think could be improved. As much as I do like the metal body, the lid especially can be a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Also little things like the USB port on the side is just a bit wonky and just takes away a little bit from the otherwise really premium look and feel. It's also a shame as I say the USB-C port doesn't support Thunderbolt 3 and it would be handy if we could also charge the laptops via USB-C. Aside from those things though, I really like these laptops. They're stylish, portable and surprisingly powerful. And let's not forget that title of world's most compact laptop, which I don't know, some people may not think that's a big deal, but I think it is genuinely quite useful because when I'm out and about traveling, I often do work on trains and planes. It's so nice to actually have a laptop that will fit on a tray table and not just jam into the seat in front of me or dig into my stomach or something. So having those tiny bezels, reducing the overall footprint of the laptop is actually quite useful, I think. As for pricing, the ZenBook 14 starts at £999 and is available now. I've put a link in the description. And the ZenBook 15 will start from £1399 and will be on sale in January. So what do you think of the new ZenBooks, the world's most compact laptops? Are you tempted to buy one? And if so, which size would you go for? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hit that like and subscribe button down there somewhere if you like my videos and you want to see more of them. I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.